G'day guys, welcome to Scotch Down Under. He's Kibble. And he's Ken. And Scotty's still not here. No. So but that's okay. That's okay. It's more for us. More history. History, yes. <laughs> so we're going to do our second part, Link with the Jamison Haig connection. And we're going to do another comparison with Jamison. As you can see, we have two different bottlings. We have, of course, the standard Jamison Triple Distilled Irish Whiskey, which, as you can see, is bigger. Yes. Why is it bigger? Because well, Ken wasn't <laughs> paying attention when we were at the bottle shop earlier <laughs> and grabbed a litre bottle instead of a 700 mil. I just saw Jamison on the shelf because we we're looking at all the other whiskies in the bottle shop. And I saw Jameson, I there, I need some Jameson, because that's what we went there for, because I didn't have one on my shelf, because I'd run out. And when I put it in the car, I went, that feels a bit bigger than what I'm... And then I came home and I went, oh, it's a one litre. Bonus. Exactly. There we go, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> they do the standard stuff, they do the cask mate series, so this is the stout barrel, they do an IPA. Yep. Uh, and there's a, like the black barrel is the other one that a lot black of people barrel. probably know. The Whiskey Makers series, so it's the Distillers, Dog, Coopers, Crows. And there's another one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't remember the name of it. And they've got the 12 year special reserve. They've got an 18 year limited release. The rare signature vintage. Deconstruction series. Um, the visitor centered ones. The crested ones. Yeah, there's exclusives that you can only get from the visitor center. You have to go there. Milton as well. Yep. It's just occurred to me that we're forgetting something in case you want The price of this one? What the <laughs> yeah. hell I'm doing here? So while, while he's checking on that, so both of these are 40%, aren't they? Uh, yes. Yes. They're both 40%. Um, and then, yeah, with nothing about chill filtering and all that stuff, they probably are. Um, and I've just got a pile of notes up here because as we did with our uh, dimple episode, we're going to touch into the history but there's quite a bit of interesting stuff with just Jameson alone, but we're going to touch on a full episode between the link between Haig and Jameson. This is a blend of grain whiskey and single pot whiskey. Yes. It's all sourced within 50 mile radius around the distillery in Cork. The Middleton Distillery. The big Sorry. giant. We really shouldn't call it a distillery. It's more of the Middleton Complex. Yeah, it's the Middleton Distillery Complex. <laughs> I think that's the actual name. Maybe of it. maybe estate <laughs> might be a, a better or, term. Or because like the, the Vatican, it's a small city. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it is. It, and the it reason they massive. put it there, when they initially decided to put it there, was like, okay, we need a place so that we can uh, do some expansion. A foresight. Yep, and they've definitely done Ultimate some expansion. Foresight. So. The old Middleton Distillery, established in the 17th century, is where this new one was set up, and that is now the old visitor. It's a visitor center where you can have some yep. pretty amazing experiences. You can go in there and do the whole Jamison experience and a bunch of other stuff. Phenomenal. Yeah. But the new one was set up in 1966. So, John Power and Son, John Jamison and Son, and the Cork Distilleries Company. They all got together and formed the Irish Distillers Group. And that covered yeah. pretty much all of them in Ireland. The three groups involved, they all basically shut down and consolidated all their production at the new facility. Yep, they closed everything else down. Yeah, so basically Middleton was built um, with room for expansion, with this amalgamation, and basically in, was it 74? Five, they ceased production at the original Bow Street Distillery and that became the Visitor Centre and since then they've expanded vastly with most recently in 2010 2010 they spent 200 million pounds yeah to basically double their capacity pretty much universally agreed as being the most modern distillery in the world and it's the biggest distillery in Ireland um Biggest distillery in Ireland, I 
don't think it's actually one of the biggest in the world, but it's it's no, got to no, make that it, list. It's, it's definitely in that list there somewhere. Um, three pot stills, which are ludicrous volume each. Seventy five thousand liters each, which happened to be the biggest in the world. Yeah. <laughs> and then they have three column stills as well. Running constantly. Which gives them a total production volume of 64 million litres a year. Yeah. Which <laughs> is just ridiculous. <laughs> Their production between each component of it is connected by fibre optic. So they're, not, they're not using pigeons. <laughs> no! <laughs> they're so going with fibre optics. So they're, they're embracing they're, technology. They're not mucking around. <laughs> now that we've talked about the distillery where it's actually made, let's talk about Jameis itself. Because there's a whole bunch of stuff that's made at that distillery. Like pretty much all of them. <laughs> all the big ones anyway. I mean, there are a lot of others are own island that are popping up that aren't made there. But yeah, most yeah, of the Yeah, so they make stuff Jamisons. Is, they, they do Jamisons, they do... Redbreast. Redbreast, they do Green Spot, Yellow Spot. Um, Bushmills is actually not there anymore. They actually went out in 2014 and made their own. Yeah. But they've got stages that they're doing their production. So the grain is still done at Milton for Bushmills. Jamison, Mr. John Jamison, was originally a lawyer. I can't even pronounce. A lower, it's A-L-L-O-A. And it's a little port town near Stirling. Right. And he was originally a lawyer. <laughs> and a bit of an entrepreneur. And then he decided to become a distiller. Well, he then, married... I was going to say there's a reason behind <laughs> yes. that. Yes. So he married the eldest daughter, going back to the Hague. So he married the eldest daughter of John Hague in 1768. And, so and, and that's where that link connected. And to put it quite subtly, they were prolific breeders. Well, back in 1768... Well, they had no TV. You had no TV. <laughs> and your rate of success of your kids surviving with all the stuff, like, you name it. So they bred a lot to make sure that some yeah, of their offspring so would actually survive, which makes sense. They actually yeah. had 16 children in total. 16 children. And eight actually... boys, eight girls. And four out of the eight boys. They went into distilling. Yes. Um, John Jr. actually worked with him didn't he yes so w once they got married they moved in 1788 they moved to dublin because these he was scotland he was scottish yep yep so now that is around the time that the scottish government actually started introducing some pretty hefty tax levies on alcohol huge taxes so they basically thought well stuff it we're not going to make much money if we do that but the Irish are doing a lot with taxes, so they exactly. moved to Ireland. So there's another third will to this, which is the Stein family, which was in the same area. They had investments they started putting in, in Dublin, in Ireland. Yeah. And so they said, okay, Jameson, you guys go over there and look after our distillery. In yeah. And so they went over there after they got married. And that was the Bow Street distillery. That was the Bow Street distillery and then they ran it from 1788 to 1805 they ran it for the stein family and then they actually bought, bought it the, so they ran the distillery and then they bought it yep they bought it from stein and then and at, at that time when he bought it his son ran john it. jr yeah so john jr ran it so ran he it. ran the operation of the bow street distillery which is basically why it became john jamison and sons, sons. exactly um so yeah john jr was at bow street and one of the other brothers william yeah, was so actually william. working for a rival no he founded a rival so they at went marabone lane yeah so they went to marabone lane well he went to marabone lane and formed another distillery the william uh, William Jamison yeah. <laughs> and co. So they formed that and there was a huge rivalry between the two. You're now getting an indication why we're going to do a separate <laughs> and this is history just episode yeah. between Jamison and Haig. Yep. And Stein. Yep. And then William died 
Oh. And James took over from him, but they still kept the name William Jamison and, and Co. Son. Yep. Yeah. Or oh, Anco, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I think it was Co. Uh, when so Bow Street yep. and Maribone and Lane were actually rival distilleries. Yep. So they rivaled against each other. And Maribone eventually went and died. Yep. And there was a fourth son that actually also had a small distillery. He had a small distillery. But. And, oh, this is <laughs> the so cool. The, the phenomenal thing as far as the impact that this family has effectively had on history. So yeah. the fourth son that had a small distillery, his grandson is Marconi. Yes. The, who invented the radio. The wireless, the wireless telegraph. Wireless telegraph. Which was new technology in 1912 on the Titanic. Yeah. Yep. So there you go. <laughs> and he also, there was a pretty famous politician that um, was a descendant of theirs as well. So. Yeah, oh, some pretty yeah, we're going to delve into that differently. Keep an eye out for it. We're going to do a full <laughs> history episode of of this whole Hank James and Stein. This the whole thing. This dynasty. Yeah, yeah. Of, epic of, of just whiskey distilling in general, and it's still being felt today. Yeah, the impact that they've all made. Before we get onto the label, which we're just about to do, Jameson in two thousand and nineteen. How many cases of whiskey do you reckon that they were? Uh, oh God, spitting out. Now, Jamison comes in cases of six. Yeah. To the best of my knowledge, it always has. Yep. So, 2019, worldwide. Worldwide. They sold 8 million cases. <laughs> so, that's 48 million bottles in 12 months <laughs> of this. Yep. We're assuming that 8 million includes both the litre and... 750, 700 mil, depending on which country you're in and how they buy yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because, you know, if you go to a pub, you find a lot of these. <laughs> Speaking of pubs. Yes. This, this is the other one that we felt we had to mention. Um, it's called The Local. Which I like. That's a cool name. Great name for a pub. Yeah, let's go to The Local. So it's an Irish pub in Minneapolis in the United States. In 2008, this particular bar set a record now they held this title for four <laughs> years in a row yep now from what we've been able to read there's no bottle shop no so this is over the bar this is a pub so basically in 12 months they sold Around 670 something cases, which basically works out to about 22 <laughs> bottles a day. On an average 12 hour day, that's two so, <laughs> bottles an under, hour. under the assumption that they were to trade for 12 hours a day, which is optimistic. <laughs> you know, it's basically two bottles an hour. Yep. I love the labelling of Jameson. I always have. I mean, it's there is, it's it oozes class. It does. It's such the colours, the font, and the, it, the, even the though label. It's not a ridiculously expensive whiskey. No, but it looks the best. It looks so good. And they've they've carried a lot of those elements through, even though they've changed the colour scheme a little. The font is still the same. Yep. Um, and still, still got that that beautiful copper edging. So the, the normal bottle's got this huge, it almost it looks like... Um, it's quite textured. Like yeah, it's, it's, it's like a texture, like um, burlap kind of texture. Yeah, yeah. whereas this one's, this one's actually quite smooth. Smoother, yeah. Um, but obviously, the obvious reason being is that they've got to distinguish them. Because you don't want people grabbing the wrong one. No, no, you definitely like, in any distillery, they distinguish their expressions. But yeah, just the bog standard, it just looks so smart. Mm. And the bottle shape, you know, this is a bit more girthier bottle shape, but yeah, overall yeah. It's, it is a nice shape. And it is a green glass. Good old jammies. It's it's like um, going back 20 years in the past, you know, you can smell that. Memories. See, see not, not for me, because I only really sort of discovered Irish whiskey probably about... 10 years ago. Oh, really? Mm. I kind of knew it existed and everything. But I mean, 
Jamison's always been a staple. But for me, I mean, like, my serious whiskey journey has, has probably been less than 10 years. Yeah, well, almost... up until then, I was just, I was drinking whiskey here and there, and, you know, there's a few that I've I, I agree. My, I agree. My serious whiskey journey would be ten years, but mm. I was definitely drinking whiskeys back then. But and oh, Jamison yeah. was one of them because I'd go around to a mates, you know, and we'd have it was normally Jamisons and dry. Yes. Yep. Like a dry yeah. ginger, and then absolutely. Yep. So you, yeah, you're definitely getting that real iconic shortbread and the the butter. Shortbread. Buttery, yep. Light, lemony citrus. Yep. Smells damn good. Yeah, like you said, <laughs> it's like catching up with an old friend. Yep. All right. <laughs> so this should have a bit more interest. Oh. Wow. Chocolate, coffee. Yeah. Richer fruit. Yeah, deep, deep red fruit. Not that sweetness that you would get from a sherry, but that fruit factor that you get from a sherry, that boldness I'm in the fruit. I'm thinking like start, um, stone fruits. Yeah. Yeah, like your plums and. Oh yeah, maybe. Yeah. Nectarines, plums and nectarines. Maybe. Yeah. Plumish. Yeah, that, that sort of a deep, richer, a real deep, but yeah, red plum chocolate yeah. coffee. Yeah, straight away. So it's a deep red plum dipped in coffee and toffee, and then <laughs> dipped in chocolate <laughs> <laughs> with a side of um, butterscotch biscuit. <laughs> See, I'm not really getting much of the biscuit though. Yeah, it's, the... it's there, but it's like way off to the sides, like over here somewhere. Mm. Whereas this one is all up in your face. Yeah, this one is that plum it's a, it's cherry. It's just classic it's just light, on rich, the side. fresh, not rich, <laughs> light, fresh. Yep, this is the skin. The skin of the plumbers that that sherry uh, biscuit. Yeah, that not skin. so much the flesh, but the, like, the, the skin. Yeah. Mm. Buttery shortbread. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and the, you had to say it. <laughs> there's almost a, a tiny little lemon zest there. Yeah, it's like it's sprinkled on. Just a pinch. Yep. Yeah, a little spritz. Oh, you're thinking like that squirt that you get from the skin. Yeah. Is that what you're thinking? That's more sort of... Not, know, not, not the... Not the citric acid, but... Not that, the citric that, acid, that, but just that yeah. little bit of the lift. <laughs> it's just good. I'm glad I got the one later. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's it's one of those just light, vibrant, fresh, dangerous whiskies. <laughs> yep, I'm thinking it is it is forty percent ABV. I'm thinking it is slightly zest. Yeah, it's not it's not fruit like it's not lemony pulp. No flesh. No, it's it's definitely rind maybe not zest. Yeah, but the. The squeeze of it, plus a little bit. It's a combination of the squeeze of the, the rind. There is, there is a hint of the juice. but And it's a little more, bit of the juice. But it's more zesty, like there's a bit of rind that's been left in there for a bit as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yep. On to stouter things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Normally. As you bring it up, you get that coffee and chocolate straight in the nose. I was actually getting more and of this coming through on the nose. Now that, that I've had that, as I was bringing it up, I could get more of that in there. That first tiny little sip that I always do. It's just silky. Mm. This hits the top and the back of the palate a lot more. 
and it's a little bit like it sits in there and it's a little I'm not going to say dry but it almost has that sensation of dryness it sits up way up in the back of the palate and just sits there you know what I'm thinking while we're thinking that zestiness because especially on the on the taste of that there's that that slight bitterness of a really good coffee black coffee yeah, I know of that. I don't drink coffee, mm. but I do know a lot of people talk about the bitterness and like when someone makes a coffee, I can smell that ac yeah. acrid s smell that's coming off it. Yeah, but that that the chocolate is still there, but you're still getting some of a little bit of that buttery shortbread. Yep. So when you're saying with and the that coffee, hints of citrus is still there. That coffee, I would associate, like you said, the chocolate, I would associate that with a really heavy cacao. Because it actually oh, it's had, yeah, dark chocolate for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, but it has that um, acidy thing and a really pure dark cacao. It has, has, has that almost bitter side to it. Has that bitterness it. to it, yeah. It's just so, it, it's different. There is a, a uniqueness to this. Because mm. it was around the same time maybe a little after this Grant's actually brought out an ale cask finish which I had held on to a bottle for ages and ages and you got to try it last year yeah and um, yeah there's that multi nuttiness that you expect from a dark ale as well yeah, there's been a few that are bringing out some ale finishes now and, and some collaborations with, like what these guys have done, there's been collaborations with distilleries actually, you know, doing beers that have done in with the wine cask, I mean the distillery's casks and vice versa. Oh, so didn't Pirate Life do one? Yeah, Pirate Life done one with lime burners. Yes. Um, and there's a couple others I can think of as well that have done. With a bit of water. It's thinned out a lot. On it the has. It has. I'm still getting some of that shortbread. Yeah, the shortbread's still there, and I'm, I was getting Granny Smith apple on the pelt. I'm thinking a little, not quite as sharp as a Granny Smith. A little bit of sweetness to it. Not quite pear sweetness. Mm. Now I've had a second yeah. one, you're right. It's uh, not It's not. Pink a Lady, granny. not a Granny Smith. Pink Lady, yeah, crispy Pink Lady. Mmm. Mm. Yep. Well, there's, there still is that almost tartness, bitiness yeah. of a really fresh crisp apple. Um, but it's a little sweeter than a granny. Yes, it is more rounded. But it's definitely, yeah, it's definitely thinner on the palate. Um, so I don't think you could add too much water. It's only 40%. I don't think you could add too much of the thin out quite easily. I prefer it without the water. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Right. Cast. Let's see what this one's like. The weirdest thing for me is, even though the theoretically the water cuts the ABV slightly, that first sniff then I got more ethanol. And I suppose that's just the water breaking things down and doing sciencey shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think most of the the common thing that comes out when you add water is you get more of that peppery barrel yeah. come through. So that will definitely come through stronger on the nose. I'm getting less, less of that the, the chocolate cask. coffee. Yeah, yep. and more of this, more okay. of the elements of this coming through. And just having a little sip, like I was talking about, I was thinking that was Granny Smith. That's definitely Granny Smith on that. Mmm, that little bit sort of zesty tartness. Mm-hmm. Alright, so for me the simple conclusion is don't water either one down. It's good to see what it does, but I wouldn't. I mean that Do most the, people the, drink Jameson with the, rocks? The cask mates softens really nicely. Yeah, this But you're losing some of that stout element, if you ask me. Yeah, you're you're losing the stout. It doesn't 
like it's still uh, quite thick on the mouthfeel. It's not mm. as thin as the standard. The standard went really thin on the mouthfeel. For a 700ml bottle, I can't remember what we paid for this tonight, but for a 700ml bottle, you're going to spend around 50 55 Depending on pricing, yeah, know, that's shop, that's about right. Which yeah. retailer? 50 55 bucks. And for this one, you're going to spend 65 70 bucks. Yep. Which is not that bad. And literally, toss a coin. Well, I was just As thinking. Which one you'd prefer? I was just thinking the advantage of this one, when you add water, it's almost like this one. <laughs> But there's still some elements of, of what's going on with it. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, yeah. For, you know, 50, 55 bucks for a 700 mil, a bog standing Irish whiskey that's that pleasant. Winner, winner. Yeah, they're both a winner. Um, and, yeah, look, it's just great the fact that they've done something a bit different. And it delivers. It really does. You don't mind paying that extra, you know... 15, 20 bucks to get that character and things. That's exactly right. Like if you're always going and buying your Jamisons, you know, month after yeah. month or however often you buy your jammies, you can go in there and you see this next to it and go, ah, oh, something well, I mean, for a little bit sake, if, if that's on a special and it's only a couple of bucks more than that. Oh, you're going to grab that. Give it a crack if you yeah, haven't Yeah, give already. it a go. Totally. And, you know... Grab the IPA as well and see which one you you like better. Yeah. Yep. And some of the other expressions. Nah, totally. Totally grab them. So, what are you going to give them out of ten? Eight and a half. Eight and a half? Eight and a half. For each. For each. Because, I mean, you know, it's solid. It holds up. It's beautiful. And it softens really nicely with a bit of water. Yep. But, personally, I wouldn't water it down. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't water them down um, either. Um... This one's a bit of a bit of a challenge with the with the watering down. You know, I think less water, maybe only a, only literally a little bit, two or three drops. Yeah, yeah. Um, rather than my usual, oh yeah, about that much. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, both have their absolute phenomenal characters, and I love the fact that even though they've finish this off in a stout barrel and it has picked up that chocolate and coffee there's still elements of this coming through underneath yeah yeah so it's a it's a fed it's an experiment that's worked <laughs> yeah I, I totally agree with you um yeah this this is a good staple um and i prefer it without water it, it thins out too much with the water mm. um yeah you, you're just diluting it you're not getting anything extra with this you're actually starting to get some of this coming through more yeah. So that is an advantage you can, this can handle, and you still got that good mouthfeel, but you don't have to add water. Yeah. This and I mean, look, it, it's happily as it is. It's perfectly fine. For I'm going to give them both 8.6. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's about it, I think. I think so. So if you haven't or don't have any Jamison, go get some. Or, you know, if you're not sure about it, get down to your local bar and try some. Yeah, it's going to be there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Until next time. Have a have good, a good one. one. It does vary between bottle shapes and things like that. But, I mean, effectively, you notice it's, it's actually not much longer. No. It's, it's just it's got just, a bit more... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Girth is important. <laughs> <laughs>